This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. When using the Windows Firewall with Advanced Security Snap-in to create connection security rules, we're going to see three options when we get to the authentication settings. The first option is to request authentication for all inbound and outbound connections. The word request implies, or it should, that we are going to uh, we desire to use this security, but we'll fall back and communicate unsecured uh, if the other machine is not capable of using IPsec or we can't come to terms in our security association. And that is really what that means. I'm going to make the request. Uh, if we can, great, we'll use IPsec. If not, we'll go ahead and communicate in an unsecure fashion. If you say require authentication, we have require authentication for inbound and request for outbound, and then we have require for all inbound and outbound. Okay, so the last one there, if you and I can't come to terms because you don't have IPsec turned on and I do, or you have a different encryption level than I do, or a different authentication method, if we can't come to terms, we just don't communicate. Okay. You must be able to negotiate this security association. Now, by default, when you create a connection security rule, the authentication and encryption settings are going to apply to all protocols and ports between the endpoints that are specified in the rule. Now, keep in mind, the firewall rules can allow traffic in on certain ports or from certain programs without securing that traffic without linking it, in other words, to a connection security rule. The connection security rule itself is not going to ask you for protocols or port numbers. It's simply going to define the endpoints uh, and allow us to secure it. When we talk about requesting authentication, well, what type of authentication do we have? We actually have several methods. The default uses whatever pre-configured methods is on the IPsec settings tab. That's available in the, uh, the basic firewall properties in the MMC snap-in. But then you have the option to add additional. We can add a first authentication method and a second authentication method, or we can just modify the default based on that security rule. So we can use Kerberos v5 for both computer and user. It's very secure, utilized inside Active Directory environments. It's going to require a domain membership. Computer. Kerberos v5 would also require domain membership, but in this case it's just computer, it's not doing user authentication. We have user for Kerberos. We have computer certificate. A computer certificate is by far the most secure. I shouldn't say by far, it's a step above Kerberos, but it's harder to implement. Uh, certificates mean that I have to request and, uh, and install a valid certificate, or it might be used for health certificates. The point is, is I'm going to have to have Active Directory Certificate Services, which is a CA. I'm going to have to distribute those certificates, uh, have a methods of verification in place. And so there are a lot of components that go into a PK PKI. Is it the most secure? Yes. Kerberos is a slight step down, but much easier to implement. Uh, advanced would allow you to configure multiple authentication methods, again, a first and a second. Now, technically, you have a pre-shared key option. That's not recommended. That is usually used in the router-to-router -router, uh, VPN type of uh, IPsec tunnels, but with Windows machines in transport mode, you know, 99 times out of 100, we'd be in Active Directory. So we don't want to use the pre-shared key, which is just manually typed in on either side. Encryption settings are also configured via the IPsec default settings, again available from Windows Firewall with advanced security. Now, typically I don't have to get in and modify these and we want to be careful that we do so in, uh, consistently because this is an easy way to get into problems with those security associations. But you do have a couple options. The authentication signing algorithms, you have MD5, which is provided for backward compatibility. The default is the secure hashing algorithm. Uh, but there are various levels of AES, which are supported on Vista Service Pack 1 and later that can be used in conjunction with uh, SHA. Encryption algorithms, you have DES and triple DES. 
Triple DES is the default. There are also various levels of, of AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, there. So again, this is a little different actually if you're familiar with the old IPsec policies. This was something that we used to do on the policy itself. Now it is a default setting and so we set those up at, the, uh, at one level. We won't find them on the actual connection security rules. But those are the different authentication types and the encryption types that we can use in IPsec. In the next section we'll look at how to determine the usage profile for IPsec on Windows Server 2008.